When we're young, we discover a big secret. Our brains have two halves. One is that chatty little bugger that never stops nattering while we're awake. That's our good friend. But the other half, we know it's there, but we can't see it and we can't feel it. And they tell us that it controls everything we do. The only time we become aware of it are those times in the middle of the night when we wake up covered in sweat and breathing hard, having just escaped that damn buried alive dream again. It's not surprising that most artists use the rational side of their brain to create their work. You know that it's there and you know what it's up to. But how can you tap into that dark, unknown part of the brain? How can you tell if it's even doing anything? You'd have to have blind faith. But blind faith in what? All you'd have is the process and the faith that eventually everything would make sense. I've called my work the shadow. It's the distillation of many shadows. That unknown half of my brain and the ever-growing shadow of global apocalypse. It's the sense that we've all been disenfranchised and that we've trashed the world that we're leaving to our children. My installation reflects my fears for the environment. It creates a world without colour, a dead world. And yet the forms reflect plant growth. It's based on an original image in my mind of a strangler fig growing in the rainforest. The strangler fig grows on a host tree until it finally overtakes that plant and kills it. This is a metaphor for humanity and the earth. I ask the question, is it all too late? There is no such thing as an innocent bystander. The, it's something dark and you know, a bit scary, but at the same time it's got a real beauty to it as well. Uh, I found it very all-encompassing, as in when you walked in you were surrounded by um, all of the work and it, it took a long time for your eyes to adjust to the, um, to the lights, which is an interesting thing because as your eyes start to adjust you start to see more within the works and you realise that there are, there are patterns on the floor, there are patterns on the wall and I particularly like it when the shadows are moving so you, it's, you don't, it keeps you a little bit buoyant, you, don't, you, you can't really focus on too many things, you need to um, really pay attention to particular areas and that's when you start to realise the details of the work, what it's made of, that it's painted. The context of coming into the exhibition to me is relevant, that uh, we walk through, and I know you don't get the, uh, the sense of that context through the video, but we walk through this dripping water and um, plants and there's a notion of, um, of, a, of a tropical garden and then you work into a post garden, um, a, an environment that maybe once upon a time could have been a natural environment but it, um, it has, um, well it no longer um, um, exudes that notion of, um, of garden or, or of a natural garden. And, the initial sense for me is the smell, you know, the, uh, the pungent smell of, of glue and um, an industrial processed fabric, um, which is the antithesis of, um, of, a, of a craft sensibility. And um, then when you, uh, when you are in there, that, um, that feeling um, is, um, is all pervasive. And to kind of been used to kind of been used to kind of assault the sense the, the senses through um, um, through a, a pared down colour pal colour palette that um, once again um, alludes to that notion of um, of, of post nature. <laughs>